This is the Real Grand Podcast. Welcome home. All right, guys. So welcome back to another week of the Real Grand Podcast. Today's a little bit different because we are doing things virtually, still inside the valley, but um, we are recording from both Edinburgh, Texas and Rio Grande City. We finally uh, got to spend uh, one more week with somebody from Star County. That's We've been trying to uh, include the whole valley and that is the goal and we will. So this is just one more uh, one more uh, instance of getting out there to, to Star County um, and, and representing you know the whole valley. And Doing that for us today, with us today, is Mrs. Corrine Garcia, director of Star Music Academy. We've we've been seeing your account for a while now, and I've been following your stuff. And it's a, uh, it's I mean anything with music is awesome. I mean I don't think anyone would disagree with that. But thanks for being here. Uh, to get us started, we're going to talk about your your music program. But before we do that, let's let's learn a little bit about who Miss Corrine is. Mrs. Corrine, tell us about yourself. I mean, and that can mean whatever you want it to mean. Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Okay, so my name is Corrine Garcia Maldonado, and um, I'm a music teacher. I live in Rio Grande City, Texas. I'm originally from Zapata, Texas, and um, I play the violin is my primary instrument, and the piano is the instrument I've played the longest. I also play guitar, I also sing, and I teach all of those instruments and a few others here in my studio, Star Music Academy. I have around 50 students um, from ages four to adult, and I teach mostly group classes, but also a few one-on-one lessons. And um, when I'm not working, I like to read. Um, I love being outdoors. I have a dog and a cat, and we also have a gecko. And um, I love spending time with my husband and we like to do um, things like birding, hiking, camping, that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I heard you talking to, to Ali earlier and it sounded like you really are into birding. That's impressive. We really Not nerded out is. about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really fun. Um, I like the I like identifying, like trying to figure out what kind of uh, what the species and all that. That's what I like to do. My husband likes to take pictures of them. That's. That's his thing. But I like to go along and the photography. Uh, yeah, I like to help identify them by by sound, by how they look, and it's really fun. It's a really fun hobby. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's cool. And the like, just outdoors in general, right? Like you said, yeah. camping and hiking and stuff. Yeah, we like to go that's biking. Cool. We have some kayaks. We need to. We haven't used yet, but we want to. So things like that. Cool, cool. All right, so that's a uh, it's a little bit of a backstory, right? Uh, man, did you say that you do from ages four to adult? Yeah, my, my students are, um, right now I have, I think they're five now. Maybe, I, no, I don't think I have a four-year-old at the moment. But I'll start students as young as four. And um, I've always had at least one or two adult students as well. So it's really fun to see that contrast between the ages. It's fun to see yeah. what works for all ages. And then it's also a challenge to um, find what's going to work for that specific student in that um, stage of life that they're in. And it's always, it's always, every Man. is different. You can't say all four-year-olds or all adults are the same. But in general, it's, it keeps my day interesting that I have a wide range of students that I help. That's true. Because, I mean, I'm thinking about, like, in any work setting, like, trying to get a four-year-old to do something that you want to get an adult to do. It's, like, a completely different, you have to go about it in a completely different way, right? I can yeah. imagine you have to do... You have to play with every situation differently. Yeah, it's a whole other animal. And I've learned so much about um, in school since I did study music and with the education track, we did have to take education classes, learn about child development. But you really don't learn it until you actually experience it. And before I taught on my own privately, I worked at the public school and I taught middle school and high school. So it's a big difference, uh, a very small elementary age or preschool age child to a middle school or a high schooler. But it's fun to to see that, to see that growth and to to be able to play. Like a lot of lessons with four year olds is just sitting down and playing with them. And they don't know that they're learning but yeah. they are. And that's that's what makes it really fun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes like we're having more fun than they are, right? Yeah. Like watching them, like it's so cute. And it yeah. must look so silly to the outside. I have a, a high school student that's interning with me this semester and she was in one of the lessons with the little kids the other day. She goes, you have to have so much energy. They're so hyper. I go, yeah, but that's the fun thing. We dance, we sing, we play with Play-Doh. We, we do all kinds of stuff. 
but it's all to help them to become um, musicians, better musicians and better people. Cool, cool. So, man, you mentioned like several instruments that you teach. Like, I'm just wondering, what was the first instrument you learned yourself? So my mom is a piano teacher. And so she was my first teacher. She started teaching lessons um, so she could have a job where she would still be able to be home with us. So when I was around eight years old, she started teaching piano lessons out of our home. My parents turned one of the bedrooms into a piano studio. My mom had four keyboards and a piano, and she gave classes after school, and I was in one of her first classes that she did. So that was my first instrument. Okay, so is that like, I've heard before that, like, if you learn piano, you can, like, learn anything. Is that true? Is that, like, the best first instrument to learn in general? I think the best first instrument is the instrument that you want to learn. I don't, I don't think there's, like, a super okay. instrument. Okay. Um, Because I get that question a lot from parents. Oh, should I put them in piano first so then they can play anything? And while it's true that a lot of the skills in piano transfer, it's really true for all instruments. Like everything you learn on one instrument is going to help you to learn another one because music is a language just like English or Spanish. And once you learn it, you just unlock um, a whole other world of things you can do. So I mean, as as long as you get your scales down, right? Like it doesn't really matter what it is or like as long as you know your yeah. notes and all that, your keys, it transfers over. Reading the notes on the page is the same no matter what instrument you're playing. So yeah, in that way, that does transfer to any instrument. Okay. I find piano is an easier instrument for some students to start on just because it doesn't take as many fine motor skills as say starting on the guitar or the violin. But um, I also tell the parents of my students not to let that stop them. Um, the child should want to do, want to participate. So if it's an instrument that catches their attention and that's what they want to learn, I say go for it. So then that makes me wonder if uh, if the younger kids are coming to your to your program, are they choosing their instrument or is it mom and dad choosing for them? I've seen both, but a lot of them really want that yeah. specific. One of my smallest students this year is on violin, and she went to her older sister's recitals. One plays piano, one plays guitar. They've been my students for the past year. But she saw kids play the violin, and she told her parents, that's the one I want to do. So she's starting with me on violin. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> she's only five. Okay, so she got to choose her instrument. So she chose, yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. That's good. I just asked because somebody that I know... Uh, who plays uh, violin, wanted to start playing like cello, but mom said no because it didn't fit in the car. (laughs) So I'm like, I wonder if that's like everybody's story. (laughs) Yeah, like I wonder if everybody, like they think they love something, but it's really just mom like, no, they're going to play that instrument. But they love it anyway, right? So I mean, it doesn't make a difference. That's true. That's funny. Yeah, that was just something that I thought about like just right now. But that's so cool that you have this program. Like, so, but how did it come to be? Because I... I mean, I we know several music teachers or like band orchestra directors, but you have your own standalone program. Like, how did that happen? That's that's different. So it's something I always wanted to do. Um, and I always I've actually done it since I was 17. Like I said, my mom was a piano teacher. And as I got older, I started helping her. I would sit in on her classes. I would help her with um, the kids, you know, help them float around the room, help kids one on one, help them with their um, written stuff that they would do in the class. And I really liked it and I really enjoyed it. And then since I played the violin in school, um, my mom would get people calling to ask if she would teach kids violin. My mom said, well, I don't play the violin, but my daughter does. And so she was the one who kind of asked me if I wanted to go that route and teach some students. And at the time, I didn't feel like I knew enough that I was confident to teach a child to play the violin. But my high school mariachi teacher told me, well, you know more than a little kid. So of course you can teach them something. (laughs) And I'm so grateful that he said that. And of course I did not, the way I taught my students when I was 17 is a lot different than how I teach them now that I have a degree and a certification and I've um, done it for a long time, but I'm still glad that I got that experience um, so young because it right away, I could tell that this is something that I love to do. So I taught um, violin students in my mom's studio. I helped her with piano students. And then once I started college as a music major, I always had at least two or three kids that they were friends of the family or my relatives, my cousins, that they would ask, hey, can you come teach my kid piano lessons? And I was always giving lessons of some kind on the side. Even once I started teaching in public school, I taught mariachi and Roma ISD. 
Um, I had parents asking me, Hey, you know, you're, you, I have a child with you in sixth, seventh grade, but they have a younger sibling that wants to play the piano or that wants to play the violin. Can you start them? So I always had like two or three, maybe at the max, maybe five kids, but it was, you know, kind of a casual thing. They would pay me, but I didn't see it as like, I saw it more of a, a hobby and not as like a business that I actually did kind of an extension, I guess, of my classroom teaching. But it got me thinking one summer, you know, I never advertised for these students. They just kind of appeared and I taught them, well, what would happen if I actually tried? And I couldn't shake that idea. It kept kind of nagging at me. And so I decided to take the plunge one year. Um, I started looking for studio space because at that time I lived in an apartment. I didn't feel like I had a good set up to teach larger classes or to teach at a professional level. Um, I found a space and I um, registered my name of my business. I opened a bit a bank account and I said, let's do this. And um, almost immediately I had students contacting me. Once I put up a website, started advertising, um, the inquiries just started coming in. So for one year I taught at school all day and then would um, come to my studio and teach a few hours every evening. So for one year, I did both working full time at school wow. and working like seven, eight hours a week after school teaching classes um, on my own. And that's a whole other day. Yeah, whole it was a super day. long day. But that also helped me realize that I could do it, that I, I was limiting myself because of my full time job to only certain hours. But I already had a waiting list of students that wanted in. So um, I thought a lot about it and I crunched the numbers and I realized that I could support myself just working part time as an independent teacher and um, have a little more freedom, have more time, have more freedom in my curriculum, be able to teach more instruments than I taught at school and be able to reach a whole market that was untapped because there were no other teachers at that time that were offering um, music lessons outside of school. So. When I realized I had this huge, you know, opportunity, I decided to take it. And it was really scary turning in my resignation letter to like a study job where you have a dependable paycheck and all of that is is not easy. But um, but I persisted and I'm glad that I did because I'm in a really good place right now. And my studio has been full for over three years, I would say. Um, very rarely now do I get to accept new students. A lot of times they're just siblings of students that I have already taught now for six, seven, eight years that have been going through my program. And that's wow. exciting to me because it shows that we've built like a culture. And um, when I do have spots open up, they go very, very quickly because my community already has, um, they're aware that I'm here and they've seen um, my students, they've seen the results. And for me, it's not about results. It's not about creating prodigies or, you know, the next pop star or anything like that. It's about creating better people and better humans and letting children explore something that they love and something that's going to make their life better. Awesome. So, okay. So let's, let's dissect that last part a little bit. You know, um, what you do what you do to help your students become better people. So how, how does music how does it shape someone or how can it make someone a better person? You learn so many skills. Um, music is a discipline that requires to get good at it. It requires consistency. It requires dedication. It requires um, self-control. It requires, and then it opens up a whole lot of brain power, parts of your brain that you weren't using coordination that you weren't using before. And in that way, and, and there's been those studies, everyone has heard, oh, listen to Mozart makes your kids smarter and stuff like that. But really, it's just about appreciating something, learning that working hard at something gets results, learning to have a good schedule where you can, you know, factor practice time into your day and um, prepare for recitals, give public performances, learn how to be comfortable in front of an audience, um, learn how to be organized, learn how to take care of things. Those are all little side benefits that students get when they study music. And like I said, I'm not about creating prodigies. I have some students that I'm pretty sure they might not touch an instrument outside of the 30 minutes or an hour that they're with me in my studio. 
but I see the joy that it brings them to make music, to learn new things, to share that with their friends. Since my students come, almost all my students come in groups and even my students that come one-on-one, we do a lot of things as a group outside of their regular lesson. So that's a big thing for me about the community that is built when people make music together. Hmm. So it's, it's like, it's a lot bigger and deeper than music itself, right? Like it, exactly. Because I see what you mean. Like you, you, t- you take the the skills or the discipline of practice. You take that with you in other parts of your life, right? Mm-hmm. Like to make you a better employee later on, or whatever, better friend. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. And you see, we don't think about it like that sometimes. Yeah, I like to see it in that big picture, and then just understanding different cultures and um, understanding history. A lot of those things tie into the kind of music. Sometimes students ask me, oh, I want to learn this song or I like this piece. And then when we get a little bit more into it, they get to learn about the person who wrote that piece or where does this come from? And you get to experience a whole other part of the world or time period that you might never have done before. And music takes you there. And that's one of the the really awesome things. That's awesome. I know that music has been getting a lot more attention, like, I don't know, in the last couple of decades, like even in the scientific community. Like, I remember, I don't know, like what, what journal it was, but I read an article that was about, they did some study, I think, um, you kind of what you mentioned, um, in utero, people were playing like Beethoven and Mozart for like pregnant women. And like, I mean, it's, I guess those kind of things are hard to like assess, like what the, what the results are, but there's all those little, um, at the very least, like anecdotally or like little stories like, oh yeah, I I played Beethoven when I was six months pregnant and now my daughter is like the best in her math class or something. But that's cool that music is getting that attention because it is like, it's, it is an art and there's a lot of science to it. And it's a lot more than, um, than just like your Taylor Swift, right, or whatever. Like, I, I like the the power that it has. And I guess you can see it in kids because, like, um, they're growing with the music, right? So, like, it's literally shaping them yes, into who they're becoming. It's It definitely has to take a part in it, right? Like, music has a, a big role to play. Like, it shapes us. I mean, it, it can affect our emotions and everything, right? Like, I've seen that, too. Like, it can make you happy or mad, yeah. depending on what you listen to, I guess. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. And it's, it's interesting um, seeing how it helps um, students develop. I've been working a lot, like talk, going back to working with younger kids, you see their, you see them struggle at first sometimes coordination wise, because there's just some parts of their body that they're not used to using. But honestly, we all go through that. Like maybe we remember when we were small, it was hard to tie our shoes or to snap our fingers, oh, yeah. you know, things that now as an adult, we take for granted, but it's amazing because our brain had to learn had to create those pathways to be able to do those skills that we just take for granted every day. And so when someone is studying music, their brain is creating those new pathways. So for example, to play the violin, your left hand and your right hand are doing completely different things. You spend all your child, you know, early childhood experience learning to work, use your hands together to be able to tie your shoes or to cut with scissors. But then when you take up an instrument, a string instrument, where you have to do two different things. It's like you have to create new pathways because you've been training your hands to work together and now you have to train them to go to work independently. And it's the same with, you know, the piano or any other instrument involving your hands. Each hand is assigned a different task and you have to separate that in your brain. So just the connections that people that study music are building is really um, helping them. They're using more brain power, I guess we could say. And I don't know the science behind it specifically, but I can see that those developmental stages that students go through. I actually have a student on Friday that has been with me since she was four and she's now in the fourth grade and seeing her, she was playing chords on the piano, three notes at one time, which is something that most of us, an adult beginner can usually learn how to do that pretty easily. But for a child, that's really difficult. And I remember her being smaller and really struggling to play those three notes at the same time with alternating fingers. And then she played them on Friday so beautifully. And just thinking back on like, wow, like the progress the student has made. And it's so simple. She can play a chord that might not be a big deal to anybody else. But to someone who's watched her grow up, it's like, it's amazing to see that transformation. The development. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. I mean, definitely. It has to make you sharper. Music has to make you sharper as a person because there's so much coordination and like just this dexterity. And yeah, like you said, like one hand is doing one thing and the other hand's doing another and your brain is thinking, your foot is tapping. Like it, it has to make you sharper. And these are things that we don't always realize, like the power that music has, but it's it's amazing, right? Like yeah. how it really is a, a, a tool, like it it can boost you in other uh facets of your life like and it'll stay with you too yeah like you're always going to remember like if if you're like eight years old and you have piano lessons like you're always going to remember like oh when i was eight nine ten years old i had piano lessons with mrs kareen right and now you're talking like 20 years down the line but like those things stay with you and that's yeah that's that's interesting i mean that makes for like a nice childhood it does right and you probably appreciate music more because of that and it's like you said it's lifelong i mean and this is not to rag on sports or athletics in any way but i mean you know we put our kid a lot of people have their their children in sports which is great but you know they're not going to be able to play soccer when they're 60 70 80 90 or baseball but they that's can true. still play the piano like that's a skill that they'll never that's very true they'll never be able to stop doing they can always do it so that's awesome yeah so take music lessons guys yeah. right it will stay with you <laughs> Even with your arthritis, you can figure, you can do something, yeah. right? When you're like 70 the years old, skill. we can get through it. That's cool. I, I want to talk about something that I saw on your website because I always kind of like, I guess we do our homework, right? Of, of who our guests are going to be. And as I was sifting through your website, at the bottom of the page, there was a statement that I liked um, that I kind of wanted to pick your brain about as far as why, why you put it there. It said, music makes life colorful. What does that mean? That was that was a big statement to me, but like, what is that all about? I think it goes back to why I do what I do, which is it's not about making um, prodigies or making musical geniuses, but it's about making better humans. And music is just one of those things that adds to our life and makes it better. Like imagine watching a movie with no soundtrack. I think it would be kind of off-putting and maybe we wouldn't notice it right away because we're so used to to having that, you know, when something tense is happening, the music rises and things like that. So all, all of those elements of the music of sound that we, we might take for granted in things like movies, TV, entertainment, it, it would, if those things weren't there, like it would make it that much more boring, that much more bare, something would be lacking, I think. And so that's just one example of music in our life, but it's really everywhere. And it really helps, uh, like we said before, you know, a child that grows up playing music gets all these skills that are going to make them more marketable, that are going to make them have more skills that they can use as an adult in the real world. And I think that's what it's about, making the world a better place. And it's also about sharing for me and sharing with others. It's great to learn to play an instrument or to sing, but then if you never share it with anyone, um, that's just something that you keep inside. No one else gets to experience that joy too. And that's why performance to me is a really big part of, of getting a musical education and being able to share with others. Share music for people and then also share music with and make music with other musicians. All of those things really make our lives better. I can say... Some of my most happy music moments in my life as a musician, as a performer, have been making music with my friends, whether it was in mariachi in high school, in orchestra, in college, when I had a band and we recorded an, an, an EP and we were playing concerts. To me, some of that was the most thrilling parts of my life, musical, musically wise, musically, music wise, however, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That really gave, you know, meaning. It made all the practicing and all the things I had learned. It's like the culmination. Like it makes it all worth it. It it makes life better. It makes it colorful and it makes us better as people. That's what that means to me. That's awesome. I think I think we all agree with that. And that you reminded me of something. So for all of your former students or current students or parents that are listening that might not have known about this, I saw that uh um, what, what was it? Was it Kareen and the Meow Meow Meow? Yes. Yeah. Was that the name of your that band? band? Tell us about that. Like, is what was your genre? Like, like what was, did I say it correctly? Yeah. Like Kareen yeah. Garcia and the Meow yeah, Meow Meow? Um, it was just, okay. we were just friends and we just wanted to do something, something fun. It started out as, uh, we were a cover band 
and we started playing. We got a little coffee shop here in Rio. It was a local coffee shop. And um, one of my friends from the band was friends with the owner. And he said, hey, you know, she says she knows that we're musicians, that we, we were all music teachers at the time. And she wants live music. She wants live music at her coffee house. So we got together, we practiced some songs and we just went out there and it was fun. And it kind of grew from there. And I really found it at that point in my life, I found it as a real good outlet. And when I started writing my own music, it really helped me get through some, I guess, you know, 20 something at that point in my life. It was, um, it was a good way for me to get through what I was going through, I guess I would say. And a good way to let okay. feelings out and just really have fun. And what I enjoyed the most was something that started out as a song in my head or something I picked out on the piano or something I sang in the shower. And then to hear it be a finished song that's like on Spotify. Oh, yeah. Nothing compares to that feeling. Yeah. That's one of the greatest feelings. That's cool. That's something that music can give you. And seeing the the growth from that little germ, that little seed of an idea to like a whole produced finished product is extremely satisfying. And for me, I don't really care if anyone ever listens to my music again, but for me, it was fun to make it and to just. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your, that's your baby. Like that's your yeah. thing. Yeah. That's for you. But okay. So where did the Meow Meow Meows part come from though? Like how did that okay. come into the name? It was, there's a band called the Yeah Yeah Yeahs. It was me and two coworkers, and we liked a song from the Yeah, 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 it's called Maps. So that that was part of it. And we had started out with a different name. We were the, the Mixolydians, which is a nerdy music term. It's it's like a music oh, okay. terminology. And then we switched that to the Mex Mixolydians. Yeah, so it's Mixolydians. And then we, we kind of went to Mexolydians, like Mexican, because we were Mexican. Um, but I don't know, it didn't stick. We didn't, we didn't really like it. And, um, I think that the guys had seen some movie, they were quoting something one time all the time where they were trying to put meow into like the conversation to see how many times they, instead of saying like <laughs> right now, they would say right meow. They were doing this thing. I think oh. they saw it on a movie and they were doing it for like weeks. And, um, someone ended up saying meow, 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 like just as a joke. And then they were like, oh, that sounds like the yeah, yeah, yeahs. And it that's where it came from. <laughs> it stuck. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I mean, it has a story. And it's on Spotify now. Yeah, right? so, it's there. Heck yeah. And um, then I made a logo. I drew a logo that was a treble clef with the cat ears. And that was kind of our our brand. Oh, the head of the of the, of the Yeah, clef so the top the of the clef had cat ears that. and that's ears. Cool. And then it was a G, the treble clef was yeah. originally a letter G. So that went with my last name. So the Garcia and it kind of, that was our little band logo. And that's cool. How long did you do that? We were active from like 20, oh man, I'm bad with the years. The EP came out in 2016 and we still, then, you know, okay. life happened. Um, one of the guys got married yeah. and I got married and it just kind of, you know, we moved on to different projects. That's always the story, right? Like somebody got married, yeah. and there was a baby, and, and then everything yeah, falls apart. Yeah, your life apart. changes and your goals change. And um, I was getting more into running my studio and gig hours, like prime gig hours, are also prime music lesson hours. So I kind of had to to choose, oh. but I I'm glad I got to do that experience. It was so fun to play shows. We got to do a few um, bigger shows that were really fun. Like our, our album release was a super fun show at a really fun venue. So I'm, I'm really glad I got to do it. Awesome. It was something I had always wanted to do when I was younger growing up. I wanted to be like Selena. So that was my Selena moment. Oh, okay. That was your moment. Yeah. I mean, it's going to stay with you forever. Oh I mean, yeah. Like you're always going to be able to look back at that. Like we were talking about like your eight year old music lessons. Now that's going to be you. Like you're always going to have that experience exactly. with the, the meow meow meows. Right. So yeah, that's cool. Yes. Wow. So I have, I got two questions for you. First one, obviously, I, I, I got to know because I can tell that you definitely love music. But why do you love music? I know we kind of talked about that a little bit, but is there anything specific that like just got you sold on pursuing it as a career or um, like, a, like you said, like a hobby? You're like, what is it about music that, that has you hooked? I think it's just in me. 
I can't remember a time when I wasn't singing something or humming something or tapping something, a beat. It's just like a part of me. And it's, I guess it would say who I, like if someone asked me what I would do, what I do, like what is my job description? I mean, right away, that's my default. I'm a musician. And like all the things that that entails. Mm. And someone once told me, if you want to be happy in your job, get something you would do for free, but then get someone to pay you for it. And I think that's why, (laughs) that's why music is for me. I would do this for free. I mean, I have done it for free. I have students I teach on scholarship. I volunteer a lot. I volunteered with my local library, with different um, nonprofits in the area whenever I can give back through my music. But it's also fun that I get to do this as a job. Like sometimes it doesn't seem real that, yeah, I get to go downstairs and wow. teach kids music all day. Like that's awesome. And I make a living out of it. So when it's something that like intrinsic, like that's part of me, like I can't see myself doing anything else. I don't know if I could have like a normal job. <laughs> I don't know how I would feel. Yeah. Because it's just what I've always done. It's who I am. Yeah. So it's just, it's innate. It's part of you. Yeah. Being. It's part of me. That's cool. That's a good answer. Yeah. I mean, like you've, there, there's nothing else, right? Like that's, that's all that there is like it's music and that's who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I get you. I get you. And then one more question. Cause we ask everybody, what do you love about the real grand Valley? I love a lot of things. Um, I love the history. I love the culture. I love that we're in between two worlds and it's like the crossroads of that. Um, I love that if I put my music on shuffle, I can go from Ramon Ayala to orchestra to oh, yeah. anything like from without skipping a beat. My music on shuffle is the most random thing ever, but it's because of who I am and how I grew up and the influences that we have all around us. Um, I love um, the food. I love the people. I've always said I could be happy anywhere that I live, but I know that the Valley will always be home for me. Like that's where I'll feel like I belong. And um, it's special. Yeah, yeah, it's special. And I love the outdoors part of it too. I love being out in nature. I love that we get so many species of birds. I love, <laughs> Yeah. I know the heat has been kind of oppressive lately, but I honestly don't mind it. And right now that it cooled down, you know, a few degrees, I love that too. So um, it's home for me. And um the music from this region, I we've had so many great musicians come from the Valley that it makes me proud to be a musician here and to just play a small part in that scene and that culture. I love that. I love that. So um, for anybody listening that, you know, is interested, how can people find your, your music academy? Where can we find you? So I'm online. Starmusicacademy.com has all the links to my socials and um, my YouTube channel, my Instagram. I'm most active probably like Instagram and Facebook, but my website's the easiest way to find out about me, about my lessons. Like I said earlier, I have had a full schedule for a while, but the next chapter I think for my academy now will be finding ways to reach more students, probably online. And I've started a little side project that I haven't really told anyone about, but we can let it be a reveal here where I'm starting to- um, Oh, snap. To start recording more um, teaching videos. My YouTube channel now is mostly performances by my students or little snippets of our classes and things like that. But um, since my normal teaching hours now are pretty much full and booked, I do want to look for ways where I can reach more students. So that's my next goal. My next chapter is um, teaching music through my YouTube channel and opening up um, lessons online. That's the next iteration so that will be coming soon so if that's something that interests you please do um follow subscribe like and like i said there on star music academy and if you are interested in lessons and you'd like to join my waiting list you can do that on um my website as well if you're not in the star county area i do teach um live online lessons currently through zoom so that is also an option wow that's awesome and so we heard it here first (laughs) on star music academy Follow her on Instagram because we, we got to, uh, I know that there's a lot of, you do a lot of uh, like posts and stuff like that and stories. So I that's how I found you. So and on, on Facebook and YouTube also, right? Yeah. So awesome. Like I like to learn, especially about music. Do you play it? So thank, thanks for being here. I, yeah, um, I actually, well, I, I play the drums, oh, but awesome. I haven't played as much. 
because like I mean they're all excuses, but you know how life gets sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if this is motivating me to 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 get back on it, and hopefully it motivates everyone else too, right? To get back on on their on their musical journey because it, it's it's a fun way to pass the time, right? It's just yeah. it's good for the soul. Music is good for the soul. Definitely. So so anyway, thanks thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, she had a, a long busy day. She was teaching up until we started this conversation. <laughs> but that's the passion for you, right? Yes. That's just that's part of part of the passion of the love for music. So hopefully, you know, this uh, this opens our eyes and we appreciate it a little bit more than music at, at face value. You know, it has power to, to change us, to shape us, to make us better people. Um, so I think this was a good conversation that, that uh, we needed to hear. Thanks so much for having me. You guys have a good day. See you later. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Don't forget to follow the show on social media for updates on episodes, interactive content, and more opportunities to grow together. We'll see you again next week on your podcast, The Real Grand Podcast. Stay safe. Take care.